Hello my lovelies and welcome to another video. I've been planning to film this one for a while but to be very honest with you I have so many beauty hacks that I couldn't even um, kind of come up with just 10. So what I did this morning is while I was doing my makeup I sort of like sat down and I wrote like some as I was going. As I was like making some mistakes as well I was telling myself like why didn't I use that hack that I always use when I should, you know what I mean? I filmed the fashion hacks video I think in January and you guys loved it so much you said you would really want to see the beauty hacks as well you want to see more fashion hacks, you want me to film those kind of like tips uh, oriented videos so I said okay let me do the beauty hacks and talk you through some of my favorite ones and show you them in action. So without further ado, I am going to go straight into them. So first thing that I did this morning as I was applying my makeup was put the foundation on. I mean, of course, after the skincare and all the other stuff, right? So I started applying my foundation. At the moment, I'm in a phase of applying it with a brush, but there's no really a rule. I either apply it with a brush or with a sponge or with my fingers. It depends really in what kind of phase I am. So this morning, morning as I was getting it in all of my dark haired girls will be able to relate so much probably blondes as well because I have seen some blondes with foundation in their hair before and I ended up putting some foundation in my hair which ended up looking like the temples like this bit here where I have like a hair closer to the face was gray because obviously it was covered in a skin color color <laughs> so I was like uh, and to be very honest with you like foundation it's quite difficult to get out of the hair so um, for me the best trick and something that is very obvious and that you should always do when you're applying makeup is put a headband like any kind of headband or any kind of even like a tape or a scarf just something that you're not really sad if you're gonna put foundation on because you can put it in a washing machine so I got this one uh, when I was at Chanel spa like a while ago and every time that I get it dirty I just put it in the machine it washes with like all the other stuff and then it's ready to be used again which is why it's so amazing I use this when I'm applying face masks, when I'm applying foundation, and that way I never get anything in my hair, which is amazing. The next thing that I often get questions about is how do I keep my underarms white? It's a really kind of a odd question, but I guess not so odd, because I remember back in the day when I used to always shave my underarms, like they never look really perfect, because no matter how close you shave to the skin, if you have dark hair, your underarms are always gonna look dark because over the time the root of the hair gets stronger and it can always be a little bit seen through the skin which is highly annoying for me especially if I'm in a shoot or if I'm at a beach I just want to be free like to lift my arms and not think if the, my underarms are looking kind of dark it's a lot of girls are sending me question about this topic so I decided to reveal my secrets I mean I have done at home laser removal I've spoken about it so many times I'm not gonna talk about it again but that really does help to me it does really help because um, when the hair root underarm is quite strong then um, it just like goes away so much easier with laser and also um, it's just really important to mention for this that you should obviously like check if it's applicable to you because it's not for every um, hair or skin type I would say but other option is definitely waxing when I was a student I would uh, wax every time before I would go for summer holidays because that way you're really calm for a while and your underarm will look absolutely like you've never seen them before if you've never waxed underarm you should definitely try it at least once because that will completely change the perception and the way you look at your skin over there it's like incredible and um, I love love looking after myself I love looking after my skin my body my health and well-being it's so important to me so quite like sharing these tips with you guys another thing that I get frequently asked is about the nail polish I often have my nails sort of like a short-ish length they're not too long they're not too short they're not like they're just touching the tip of the the finger I guess and for me it's very important to like look at my hand and say okay this is my hand not someone else's hand which is why I always use those kind of nude nail polish colors because they just always go with me once I painted my nails red and even my best friend said 
this looks weird like it's not even your hand so yeah do you know what I mean I always am rushing when I'm painting my nails which is like the worst thing you could do like never paint your nails before you're going to bed because you're gonna wake up with ruined <laughs> nail polish and never paint them before you're about to zip your trousers or you know like close your jacket because it's not gonna last but I do have two tricks that can kind of help uh, get your nail polish to dry faster one of them is to put uh, your hand immerse it into like a cold water if you close if you if you close the like a sink and have a little bit of cold water covering the bottom and then you put your hand in it the cold water will help cool down and uh, conceal it all but my favorite tip is to add a bit of cuticle oil onto the nail bed so not just onto the cuticles but to tap it onto the nail and that really really dries the polish much faster like literally after 10 seconds the polish is dry which I believe is amazing I, I think that because obviously the nail polish is an organic um, solution the oil then kind of like seals it it creates a barrier which seals it you know like that's kind of kind of like a like an instant dry top coat so I quite like that another thing that I realized this morning is that my contour brush was not clean and to be honest I was kind of in a rush I didn't have time and sometimes it happens to me as well that when I travel I forget to bring the contour brush I bring the big fluffy brush and I mean I need the that's just not good it's great for powdering but it's not great for applying everything else on your face which can be like quite difficult now I learned this trick from a makeup artist and he showed me how to put a finger on a big fluffy brush to create more definition and more sort of like precision with the brush. I really love this trick. You can use it with pretty much any brush. If you just put a finger in the middle of the brush, I'll insert how, um, you can add a lot more precision to your brush so that you can use it everywhere from your cheeks to your nose to your forehead even as a blush brush whatever you desire which is a great tip when on the go and you only have one brush another question that i get a lot is how to get a perfect precision eyeliner how do you get them to be under the same angle how to do it blah 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 i mean i'm sure you know because i used to have a lot of trouble applying eyeliner and there's two things one thing is it's a matter of practice and i believe like now a lot of us have a lot of time so <laughs> maybe now is a good time to practice that eyeliner but another thing is also like discovering what type of eyeliner brush works for you is it the one that you dip in is it the like one that is like on an actual brush like a makeup brush or is it like a pen eyeliner which is one I use and I find really the easiest one when it comes to application uh, you just have so much control because I mean like how long have we been practicing how to use a pen like since we were what five you kind of are probably the best at using a pen eyeliner at least I am my tip to everybody that cannot get the same angle and is struggling to sort of like um, get the eyeliners to match is to use a flat brush dip it into some kind of like brownish um, brownish maybe eyeliner and to kind of like uh, put a line starting from the bottom lid kind of going up if you just follow the line you will not be able to make a mistake so this is fluffy this can be wiped off this is not a liquid anything it's quite easy to do this and by doing this you will create two kind of over the eyeliners which are following the natural line of your eye now we can stop here and you can say like this is my cat eye winged liner which is not liner it's obviously just the eyeshadow but it does create a bit of a winged eye look however if you still want to use eyeliner which I support you do then you start following the line which you have drawn so you already have the angle you already have the line all you need to do is just follow it with the pen it's kind of like um, you know you're copying a shablon like you're copying something that you already have on your eye so it's pretty easy to you know practice with this what I do I always start with a wing so if you follow the line that you've just created with the eyeshadow and you create the wing then you can start following the eyelash line now you will notice that I never apply the eyeliner in the inner corner of my eye I find that that closes my eyelid and I used to actually do that when I was younger and now that I look at those pictures my eye looks a lot more closed if you apply a very thick layer above your lashes it will look like you don't have the eyelid like your eyes are kind of you know going down instead of opening the eye which looks much nicer so I start from like a I don't know like a one third of my eye or maybe like I leave the quarter of my eye like without anything and then I start I connect to almost the end of the liner I connect the line kind of going straight 
However, you will notice that that leaves a big gap, which I then just color in. I think this part of coloring in the eyeliner is the easiest one. So what you need to do is once you got your wing, you just connect a straight line to almost the end of the line, not to the full end because you want to have the sleek ending. So you connect it to somewhere 30 quarters of the wing and then you color in the rest. I think it's pretty simple. If you practice at the beginning it might be a bit more difficult but the more you practice the better you will be at it. One tip that I think is just the, like something that adds so much attractiveness to the woman and is probably for me if you ask me was the sexiest part of the woman's body I think are the shoulders, the color bones and a little bit of back here. I think it's just so attractive and for me it's something and it's a part of my body that I like to show and I like to accentuate. So what I like to do over there is I kind of do a special makeup. Over the time I learned a few tricks on how to accentuate this part of the body and how to make it look even more attractive. I tried like so many different things like you know like the whole contour and over complicated routines and I honestly think that's quite unnecessary if you ask me. What I love the most, especially when, I'm, when I have like a kind of evening appearance or a dress like this or a top like this, no jacket, nothing over it, and if it's like a red carpet thing, if my hair is up, I specifically like to apply first the primer on the collarbone, on the tip of the collarbone and a bit here on the shoulder. And I'm currently loving the Laura Mercier Illuminating Primer, especially because it's illuminating. And then, once you've got the primer on, the highlighter sits quite nicely. Because if, if I don't put the primer first, it can look a little bit powdery. So then I apply with my fingers a bit of a... Um, a bit of a like any kind of highlighter but I make sure it's not glittery I don't think the glittery one looks good I think um, it's much nicer when it's more shimmery and lighter than your skin color and after that if like I said I don't have really much going on here if I don't have a jacket if I don't have my hair down I love to put a bit of lip gloss well you will see that uh, my skin here is glowing really nicely and that's because of the lip gloss uh, I apply a bit of a lip gloss and I tap it in with my finger so this is not sticky at all but it just gives this nice kind of a moisturized silhouette that stays there because if you apply lotion your skin kind of gets it in but a lip gloss it doesn't really soak like in it doesn't um, I don't know like you don't leave a massive layer so that it's sticky and wet but you just like apply a little bit then you tap it in with your fingers and it leaves this beautiful glow I really love this and for me especially for like summer nights is my favorite look I love having these kind of like tube tops you can also apply it on the top of your cheekbone if you're not wearing any makeup or just here under the brow arch I think that adds such a beautiful beautiful healthy glowy skin look and for me it's my favorite after filming my last uh, video, which was, I believe, a favorite shoes for spring summer 2020, I showed you 15 pairs of shoes, I tried all of them on, which took me a while, and I got so many questions, how are your feet so moisturized, so uh, no dry skin, no this, no that, what do you do, what do you do, what do you do? And I think feet are something that's so easy to forget when it comes to care. I mean, they're just kind of like, you know, a part that we tend to forget, right? But I believe that feet need much, much, much more love and care and affection because they're in shoes, they, you know, like, they're constantly kind of battered. We don't really look at them or look after them. They're so important because they carry us everywhere around the world and they, you know, allow us so much to see and do, uh, which is why I'm so grateful for them. But uh, one thing that is very important to me is that I keep a foot file in my shower and that always makes me remember to use it. So what I do is... Um, I use it probably I would say at least twice a week but every time that I am washing my hair without a fail because while I got my conditioner on I mean you're supposed to keep your conditioner on for like what 10 to 20 minutes and you know people say like oh, I usually shave while I've got my conditioner on but that takes me like five minutes five minutes you need to use that space so I make sure that I file my feet while I'm in the shower which is the perfect time because by that point your feet would have been really soft and nice to do that and then every night or pretty much every night I apply a foot cream on my feet before I go to bed. Um, I do that as I apply my body moisturizer as well after a shower. Um, very frequently I will do one of those like um, sheet masks for your feet, the ones that um, 
like peel them off, you know what I mean? And I think they're quite interesting. I even did it once before Venice Film Festival and then when I got to Venice because it kind of your feet start peeling in two weeks but you don't really know when to expect it. So you need to plan these things. Don't do it when you're gonna have like an event or uh, like a time you're gonna wear sandals but it's pretty pretty um, interesting thing and I don't think you need um, to get your pedicure professionally done if you are actually looking after your feet regularly. So it doesn't need to be expensive, you don't need to bring the bank, like I didn't have a pedicure now since January because the last time I had it was just before fashion month and after that I just looked after my feet myself which is absolutely fine for me. When it comes to feet there are four or five creams that I really love using. There's a shawl one called K Plus Repair, there is Clarins one that I love, a Bird's Bees coconut oil that I use like uh, I love it. There is also Soap and Glory one that I think is amazing so those are kind of my go-to foot creams that I really enjoy using. There's one tip about when it comes to hair. I get a lot of baby hairs as well you can see kind of right and I love them. I love using them to kind of like style different looks to um, just like show my face but also to decorate it a little bit but they can also be annoying as beep because like when you get like flyouts here or here on your face you cannot create this like neat 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 look it's quite annoying for me at least, you know, because I like to have a bit of mess, but overall I like to have sleek hair so that it shines like this, you know? One thing that I learned from my hairdresser is that she uses a toothbrush to sleek it down. Not like, you know, doing this with your hands or whatever, but using the toothbrush you really, really, really comb through those like stubborn hairs. And then she also used like a waxy kind of like matte pomade by way that I then later bought because I was like, okay, if she uses this, I also need it. And what she does, she dips a little bit in, she kind of worms it either between her palms and then she works it through with the toothbrush, which creates really like an amazing sleek look and for me my favorite look you can also use it on the sideburns like for example if you're annoyed by your sideburns you can comb them back with the toothbrush and that really really helps get all the hair in place which I think isn't like a little amazing tip for kind of you know styling your hair when it's perhaps on a third day I don't know how often you wash your hair but you know what I mean when it's just before the wash one more tip that I think is great is for the sheet face masks. Now, I love sheet face masks and recently when I was tidying my home, I realized I have so many that I absolutely love. My favorite one is from La Mer and the other favorite one is 111 Brightening Skin Care, uh, Brightening Skin Mask, whatever it's called. I'm not sure, but I love them. Also, Estee Lauder's Advanced Night Repair Sheet Mask. Oh my God, how amazing. But the annoying part is that you have to be lying in bed to wear them and you cannot go around, you cannot apply a face mask and go around. And I like keeping busy, I like doing stuff, I like tidying, I like, I don't know, like whatever I want to do, I want to get up and get a drink, you know? I don't want to be like lying like this because the sheet mask is on and it will slide off. So I recently discovered something, I'm sure you can get this on Amazon, I think I got this on uh, Cult Beauty, I believe. And once you apply your sheet mask on, you just put this over, you attach it behind your ears and it keeps your sheet mask in place. You look absolutely creepy. I was sunbathing the other day, I mean as obvious, and I had it, I had a sheet mask on with this in my garden and a neighbor um, child like looked over and saw me and I'm sure he had nightmares that night because that was not something nice to see. But it works and it's amazing and I really 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 recommend this. I think it costs like a pound or two, I'm sure you can get it on Amazon, but um, I'll try and find the one that I got and I will link it below, but I think this is just genius. Another question that I get a lot is um, how to keep kind of like no makeup makeup look really natural and not kind of go overboard with, you know how people say like the no makeup makeup look really requires a lot of makeup? I don't kind of like that role. I mean, I want to have one product in my bag when I'm doing the no makeup makeup look and it's very easy. I usually have a face palette. So on this occasion, I will be using like a glow um, face palette to create a whole look. And what I would do is I would add a little bit of bronzer from it, then a blush on my cheeks, on the bridge of my nose, and a little bit even over here. That way that adds you that really like a no makeup makeup look, but you get a like really nice rosy glow, kind of almost like, um, you know, that you look like you just finished working out. And then a bit of highlighter, just a little, like, tiny, tiny, tiny little bit because I love it. Here and then on the cupid's bow as well. And then what I do is I use the bronzer shade a little bit on my eyelids. And that's basically the whole look. Um, if you want to have like a rosy lips, if your lips look pale, you can just dab in 
a bit of a blush on to your lips I think that works really really well and that is my no makeup makeup look that way I don't end up with like a blue eyeshadow because oh it was just there you know it's so easy to get kind of crazy when you have so much makeup everywhere around or you know you're like oh just a bit of liner just a bit of this just a bit of that just let me fix it let me just like make it more equal and then you end up with more makeup than you actually wanted that is kind of my <laughs> uh, rule when I want to create a very natural makeup look, especially the one for like traveling or, um, you know, like when you just want to look very, very natural. I only use the face palette all over my face, including my eyes. So, you know, the one which has the bronzer, the blush and the highlighter. And that was it with my beauty hacks. I mean, I have like hundreds more, but I totally limited to 10. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Um, and once again, I will see you very, very soon. Bye, guys!